Welcome to the Popish Pot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today we are here celebrating the feast of Saint Scholastica. Mm. Now, Saint Scholastica was born 5th century, mm -hmm. so back in the late 400s, uh, and, and died in about the middle fives. Yeah. Should be noted, Saint Scholastica is most famous for being Saint Benedict's less famous but holier sister. Yes, they are possibly twins. Majority of the stuff we know about her was actually written in dialogues mm -hmm. by St. Gregory the Great many years later. So We're just going to run with twins. Yep. It's more impressive if, you know, the founder of, of male monks and, and groups of, you know, religious sisters communities were siblings that were twins. Mm -hmm. Because and, it, it balances. Yep. And, and as a result, <laughs> she is the patron saint for women's community, for women's Benedictine communities, mm -hmm. uh, schools. Well, she is named after, you know, schooly stuff. Yep, schools, tests, books, reading, convulsive children. I assume mm. that has to do with her childhood. Um. And and she is a uh, nuns, and she is occasionally invoked against storms and rain, which is slightly ironic, given that she caused storms and rain. It's like Saint Lawrence and barbecue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we go for the irony, and one and, that you will like, and and, and one oh, which we, Mike will appreciate a lot. We love the irony. She apparently is also the patron the patroness of Le Mans. The town or the race? The town. Good enough. I, I was really <laughs> hoping it was a race. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, it, it, it is in Europe. Every once in mm -hmm. a while, they'll be like, you know, usually it's some title of Mary is the patron of this thing. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you know St. Scholastica lived in the 5th and 6th century. Mm -hmm. Le Mans didn't start running as a race until 1923. It, it, it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, the patron saint of television lived before we knew what electricity was. So, mm -hmm. the, the patron saint of motorists lived before the invention of the motor car or well, the internal combustion engine. One of the two patron saints that are unofficially in charge of finding a parking space lived in horse and buggy days. Mm -hmm. The patron saint of the interwebs lived long before computers were invented. Yeah. And he would like it if there was interwebs, because it would make it a lot easier to record everything any human knows about anything. <laughs> All the knowledge. <laughs> So, so back to Scholastica. We yeah. don't hear we don't hear a whole lot about Saint Scholastica. It's true. What? But how do we? Where where do we find out about her? Well, where where's, where where does what we have mm -hmm. come from? Well, I, I pointed out it's from largely dialogues written by Saint Gregory the Great. He was great. Mm -hmm. And for most part, if you know one thing about her, you know one story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's. Honestly, that's really the only thing I know about Saint Scholastica. The one story, which is, you know, on the on days before she died. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I knew she was like, you know, a nun, and you mm -hmm. know, yeah. I assumed she made an order for nuns that was similar to her brothers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they were known for once a year getting together and visiting each other, usually at a place that was near his abbey. Because of course, she couldn't go to his abbey, and he mm -hmm. couldn't go to her because mm -hmm. they were all single gender. So, mm -hmm. but they got together once a year because they were siblings and. Sometimes that's the proper amount of time to visit your sibling. Mm -hmm. Seriously, mm -hmm. uh, that's a, for some, for at least one of my siblings, that is about the amount of time I spend with them. Yes, and because they are both, you know, saints who founded religious orders with rules and stuff that are still used today, they spent the time worshiping and discussing the Bible and theology and stuff like that. You know, I, I recently had a priest challenge me, and not just me, but everyone who was at Mass that day, mm -hmm. to memorize uh, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, where St. Paul's talking about, you know, if there are higher things, you know, focus on those that are above. So, so I see you've succeeded so far. Not, that's what again, got. again, I'm Catholic, so there's a part of me that is really against memorizing scripture. <laughs> but, so I'm presuming that when two saints meet, mm -hmm. what they do is they mostly talk about the higher things, the things above, the things that are good and honorable and noble. Yes, unless they're two of the humorous ones where they, they in real life can't stand each other because they're ex exact opposite forms of sainthood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were not, so th they spent their time talking together. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Benedict was a really cool guy in that, you know, he's the author of The Rule of St. Benedict and, you know, he's a big to-do abbot, but he didn't think he was above the rules. So he'd spent this great day in conversation with his sister, mm -hmm. but then towards the end of the day, well, the rule of St. Benedict, you know, part of it is stability, so they've got to go back to his, he's got to go back to his abbey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can't just spend the night out, even if it's with his holy sister. He's got to get back to the abbey. So he says, all right, sis, it's been great. I got to get back to the abbey. The rule says so. 
And if I'm going to enforce the rule for everyone else, I've got to enforce it for me. Yes. However, she possibly feeling that it was the end of her life time and this would not happen again until eternity. And then I assume, you know, your theology discussions are much different when you're standing in front of God doing it. <laughs> so, but there's so many more people to talk to. Exactly. <laughs> yes. They, they, they were, you know, monks and nuns. It's like, these are the five people I hang out with every day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love you, but we spent 40, 50 years together. We'll spend plenty of eternity together. But for now, I'm going to talk to this fascinating cherubim over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, she asked him to stay. But, but sis, I can't stay. The rule says I have to go. Yes, that's what he said. So her response was to pray. <laughs> when in doubt, God. That's part of the reason why, why she's a saint, you know. She didn't try blocking the door, you know, something. She's like, and what she prayed for is she asked God to make it so that he would stay. And then a giant storm happened almost instantaneously. <laughs> At which point he's like, what did you pray for? <laughs> <laughs> may, may God forgive you for what you've done. <laughs> And she responded with some variation of, I asked you and you wouldn't listen. So I asked God and he did. Mm -hmm. And thus, less famous, but holier than Benedict. I don't think, you know, your ability to control the weather through prayer is a, a marker of, of sainthood between different saints. He wanted to leave. She wanted him to stay. God was clearly on her side. Holier. God gave, I wear a St. Benedict medal. I'm not slagging Benedict. I'm God, gave, God, last... gave him, God gave him an excuse that he, that he, that he, that he that would work against his rule. I'm just saying. In this... I was unable to, to make it. The weather was so terrible. Just in this one instance, Scholastica was more closely aligned with God's will. There is that. You know, we should not worry about whether God's on our side. We should worry about whether we are on God's side. That's right. Yes. But anyway, as there was a huge storm, so he had a completely valid reason, even in his law, to <laughs> not go out and possibly, you know, die trying to get through the storm. They, they spent the night continuing discussing theology and the Bible and so forth. And enjoying, you know, brother and sisterly company. Uh-huh. And then... What do they play checkers? Probably didn't exist then. Probably not. They probably had chess back then, because mm. that's been around very late. It's gone through various things. It started out in the Middle East where the queen was a visor. It's very we'll do, complicated. We'll, we'll do an episode I've, on chess later. No, no. I, I read a 500 page book on it, but I then got rid of it because I'm like, when else am I going to read a 500 page book on chess? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so the next morning he returns to his home because the storm let up. Mm -hmm. And approximately three days later, he has a vision. Yes. Of his sister going to heaven at which point he, you know, then sends the monks out and probably a horse and cart to collect her body and put her in a special tomb that he had made for her. Hmm. So, okay. Scholastica had correctly perceived that her end was coming. This mm -hmm. is the last time they'd get to spend together, so they should spend as much together time together as they could. Except, for, of course, when they're spending eternity together because they're both saints. But, you know. So today is, as mentioned at the top, the Feast of St. Scholastica. So... Let's all take a page from Scholastica and conform our will to God's. And in the process, maybe show up our siblings. Men can... Or at least, you know, pray for the weather we want. There you go. So, subscribe to our channel. Ring the church bell to be notified when the next plot is uploaded. Hit the like button because I said so. Comment below <laughs> with how your relations with your siblings helps to make you holier or perhaps less holy. But you're and, working on that. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share that love. love.